What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Unqualified Film Bros podcast. We're starting with the same three we started with last week. I don't think Ben's joining us tonight, but he surprised us last week. It was a lovely so... cameo mm-hmm. for one mm-hmm. of our regular, for one of our hosts. <laughs> <laughs> um, as promised, we are talking about the bear that did cocaine on tonight's episode this week's episode this morning's episode if you're watching us sometime in the a.m last mm-hmm. week's episode if you're watching us in the future Next week. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but for the episode that releases on march 3rd 2023 that was not me looking down to check what the day is we're talking about cocaine bear longest intro ever three of us here tonight what'd you guys think so I feel like Cocaine Bear had a bit, like, a lot going into it, because Cocaine Bear is possibly, like, the greatest title for, like, a film of this caliber, like, ever, you know? Like, it's just, like, it's, like, like everyone is just, like, oh, my gosh, that, that, that title is, like, hilarious. I, like, I wonder if it's actually good, but I love that title. And so I'm very happy to say Cocaine Bear actually lives up to the ti- to the title and is actually a great a good film it it has it and there is it, obviously it has some problems to to it we'll get into it i felt the climax was a bit weaker than i would have liked but the combination of like keeping it both serious but like heightened it's a difficult thing to do and i think i think elizabeth banks and co kind of like they they managed to thread the needle here. I think I I liked Cocaine Bear. I will say Definitely. full stop. <laughs> Color me shocked. I would not have thought you would have liked this movie. <laughs> really, really. I, 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 that's it. I see. I see how. But I will. I I was. I wasn't expecting to. I was. Ex- I was hoping I would. I would like the film go going in. You know. I. I. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get into it. That's yeah. something that, and just to speak in generalizations here for a moment, mm-hmm. that's something that I've kind of failed at weaning myself off of. And I hate ending a sentence in a preposition, but I just did. Hmm. I, I still go to movies either expecting to like or expecting to dislike. And I think that impacts how I see the movie. Like, I went into Quantumania wanting to like it. I went into Avatar The Way of Water not expecting to like it. And I think that, granted, I think Quantumania is better than most folks make it out to be. I think Avatar The Way of Water should in no way, shape, or form be the third highest grossing movie of all time. But anyway... Um, Cocaine Bear I wanted to like and then I liked it Mm -hmm. and you know I I think when you get something and I said this I think in our group chat or to one of you or to someone else um, but what, what we get from Cocaine Bear is not a sequel it's not a reboot it's not based on a comic book it's not you know a star vehicle for anyone it's just hey, this crazy thing happened in the 80s. Let's, you know, make a... <laughs> Let's dramatize it. <laughs> and, you know, run around a forest for 90 minutes mm. and then CGI a 500-pound bear high on cocaine. <laughs> like, it's so refreshing to see something so just out there. mm for a movie like this i don't know max what do you think yeah i mean it, it's exactly what you kind of want from a film like this like you go into a movie and it's called cocaine bear you're not getting an oscar <laughs> you're not getting an oscar winner there you're not like, getting a deep dive this is into not the... bait at all <laughs> um but what you do get is a solid cast solid direction great storyline because it's just off the walls nuts from the jump yeah Mm -hmm. from the jump from as soon as you see you know the inside of that plane (laughs) with the cocaine being thrown out the door (laughs) yeah 
look, mm. we've talked about opening openings of films, Babylon being one of them, where mm. <laughs> in the first 10 minutes, you're exposed to some pretty <laughs> wild things. Mm. You're exposed to some wild things here. And yet, this is so much more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. way less realistic, mm. even, but it was so much more fun. It's like, mm-hmm. it's one of those films where you just go in and you enjoy it. It like you can't have expectations for it, even if you go in thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna like it," or well, mm-hmm. "I want to like it." It's a you can't go into something like this and be like, "Yeah, I expect it to be good," or "I expect it to be bad." You expect it to be cocaine bear, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it delivers on being cocaine bear. 100%. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> no. Nuts. But I I do think though, for real, the the cast I feel like is a major part of this film's success because it's a bizarrely good cast. Like, I mean, it's <laughs> the fact, the fact that it's this a, it's is a Ray cast. Liotta's work. Go it? on. No, just Sorry. Go on. the fact that this is Ray Liotta's last, like one of his last films, if not his, his straight last up film. last film mm-hmm. is like, it's both, <laughs> it's like, it's both a testament to how, good the the people they actually got for the film it is and also like almost like adds to like this mystique is not the right word but this like status of cocaine cane bear but like mystique isn't all... that far off it's really yeah. not it's not I mean, that yeah. far off you look, you look at the cast that we have here mm-hmm. and other than ray liotta None of the names really jump off the page. I mean, Jesse Tyler Ferguson is. Yeah, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Alden Ehrenreich, Carrie Russell, Carrie Russell mm-hmm. Matthew Reese, Jr., Mar- Margot Martindale, famous yeah. for playing character mm-hmm. actress Margot Martindale in Bojack Horseman. <laughs> These are actors that you know from not necessarily being leads in other films. You know them really from supporting roles. Alden Ehrenreich, you know, he was on Solo, but that's the exception that proves the rule. Everyone else, really, unless, you know, my mind is is slipping on someone, mm-hmm. really has been a side character before. And in this film, with the way that it's structured... You don't really feel like anyone is the lead. Mm. You've got Terry Russell, you've got O'Shea Jackson Jr., you've got Alden Ehrenreich, you've got Margot Martindale. They feel like the four major players here. Mm-hmm. But none of them feels like the lead. And of course, Kerry Russell gets top billing. Mm. But this is really the definition of an ensemble cast. But- yeah, but they're all. Is it such a stretch to say that the bear is the star of the film? That's... No, <laughs> it's not. But but like to your point though, George, they're all comfortable in that role of like, oh, I have been in en- ensemble cast before, or mm-hmm. I have been maybe a supporting actor and not the lead. Carrie Russell and there are people that have played main characters, but mm-hmm. um, sure. they're not like leading people. They're not leading mm-hmm. actors that are gonna command a box off. This isn't a box office film. You don't you mm-hmm. don't see Dwayne the Rock Johnson at the front of the cast for Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Thank God. <Yeah. laughs> I will say that I do feel though that like everyone, all the performances I felt like were like again, as as I was saying, I feel like everyone did a great job at like having everything like heightened but not like overly ridiculous like jesse tyler ferguson's character he he's kind of he's kind of a bit like a bit of a of an exaggeration but he doesn't feel like a cartoon character kind of you know like i feel like it's it's a difficult thing where it's very easy to just be like parody tree hugger character or something like that and i i again i i commend everyone for doing a good job at like balancing it in my opinion i mean with his performance you know and and we'll talk about ray liotta in a minute because i've got a similar note for him Mm -hmm. in his final film role which Mm -hmm. is just ridiculous yeah so Um, honestly (laughs) it's like it's i I don't want to understate that it's 
terrible and sad that he has passed. Mm -hmm. But for this to be his final film after the career that he had, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get into it. But anyway, a little bit <laughs> Jesse, Tiger, Jesse Tyler Ferguson feels the most a caricature. Mm -hmm. in this. And maybe it's the ridiculous, you know, wig and mustache. <laughs> maybe it's the costume. Maybe it's just the the manner of his character's death mm -hmm. but like he's the only in, in a movie about a 500 pound black bear ingesting pounds upon pounds of cocaine he feels like the most unbelievable part for some reason yeah yeah that's that's legit he, he amps up and i don't really want to use the word silliness mm-hmm but he sort of feels like that wacky side character who's killed off in the first act for the sole pur purpose of being a wacky side character that's killed off in the first act. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just me. I get that. I get that. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I can't, I can't, I can't dispute, dispute that. He is kind of, he is kind of the, yeah, like the, the role of like the wack, the wacky, early char character who ends up getting knocked off early on you know like it's it's but but i do feel like like you know uh alden alden aaron <laughs> alden aaron writes like our arc is a bit like it you might consider I, him the lead of the film yeah the yeah he, character progresses through the arc so yeah it's yeah yeah it's like he again it's it's both it's hard to explain the film both respects the fact that like he's going through something but also still knows how to have fun with that fact i feel like like his his almost like like his his it, it never feels like like it's making fun of him but it also still like his his mourning is so over the top that it does feel like like not comedic but like again heightened is the word i keep i keep thinking of you know can i just say he's a really good actor oh yeah like you look 100%. at him in solo you look at him in hail caesar you look mm -hmm. at him here and i wouldn't say he's got the broadest range as an actor but when he's in the right role, and in those three films that I just mentioned, he's in the right role, that his skill set really allows him to play to his strengths as these characters and deliver good performances every time. Mm -hmm. I've yet to see a bad performance from him. I also, Which, I also, I, 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 I loved O'Shea Jackson. Called, I, I could not have called that walking into the theater to see Solo. Mm. And now, having seen him in at least those three films, and I'm probably forgetting a few. Yeah, never seen a bad performance out of Alden Ehrenreich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I also, I, I did honestly really like his and O'Shea Jackson's chemistry together. You know, they they had they, great chemistry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, it's like it's they they should uh, it's it's cliche, but like they should they should like they should be like in buddy cop movies to get like together or something yeah. like that. I feel, I feel like they. They 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 could they could do really well <laughs> like you know and, like carry the entire film I feel like <laughs> and also also Car Carrie Russell you know I feel like Carrie Russell like is like great but she's like kind of like low profile as an actress like you know like I don't see her I feel like I don't see her too often but I feel like she's memorable when when I do see her so and again I feel like in this film she was also I, I like she she's also arguably she she is also arguably a lead me. kind of like at the very least in the you know main four as we were saying and like again I just I feel she did a great job too yeah uh, I, I think again this film with the dynamics of its ensemble and how it's structured. No one is really given enough screen time to be the quote lead, unquote. Mm -hmm. um, 
again, Carrie Russell, as we've said, gets top billing. She's probably on screen the most other than the bear. Um, but, you know, what we get from her is another really solid performance in a career of solid performances. Mm -hmm. She feels the most grounded of all the characters here. And I think that's needed in a film called Cocaine Bear. Yeah. Yeah. Because Having... she's, she's a nurse. She's a mom. She is the, the, I don't want to say the audience's eyes into the film because I don't know if that's who's seeing this movie. Um, maybe it could be, I don't know. I, I don't know what the target demographic was for this film, but uh, she certainly feels the most realistic of all the characters. And I think that gives us as an audience a sort of level-headedness, a sort of groundedness where we can say, all right, this is the realism of the film. And this is how a mom or a nurse would react if her daughter and her daughter's friend were attacked by a bear that had done cocaine. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about our primary, not our primary antagonist. <laughs> even though I would I would call the bear much, you guys are gonna hate this yeah. much in the way that Thanos is the protagonist. <laughs> Maybe not protagonist. Yeah, protagonist of mm -hmm. Avengers: Infinity War. The bear is the protagonist of Cocaine Bear. <laughs> There's. So let's, it, let's talk from before we get to the bear let's talk about our secondary antagonist played by the late great ray liotta mm -hmm. what did you guys think of sid i feel like 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 i can't i can't escape the fact that like this is like you know again as i said ray liotta is one of his last performances i feel like he i i don't know it's just i feel like he he i think he did a great a great job the the only thing that felt like weird was and we, we could talk about that when we talk more about the bear itself as well i feel like his sort of final twist as being like the main bad guy not the main bad guy but like the in the climax kind of like the main bad guy kind of felt a bit forced kind of but i I real I liked Ray Li Ray Liotta when he was on screen. I think he I I in I I felt like he he just naturally played like this the the like higher up gangster trying to deal with all this all this bullshit going on. It's interesting that you say gangster because <laughs> I don't think when he made Goodfellas thirty three years ago, <laughs> he thought my last role is probably going to be the villain in Cocaine Bear. He was also <laughs> in Blackbird, which Apple TV series, where I think he also plays a similar kind of like a criminal underlord or mm. whatever. So mm -hmm. like that's kind of funny too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I did yeah. see that he. This is not his last role. He has a couple more posthumous roles coming out. Okay. Um, okay. A that's few more films. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Apologies for for my misspeaking. That's okay. I mean, it, it, it's dedicated to him, so I think it's a fair assumption. To... In There's four films memory. coming out. In loving memory of Ray Liotta. Yeah, this God film, Cocaine awesome. Bear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, anyway, like, uh, oh, I was just saying there's four films. Okay, um, four more films. Okay, got, I mean, that's... Yeah, so he's got... We'll be seeing him over the next that's good that's good at least that there are more performances from yeah. him just to, to see though i would say as ridiculous as it is this would still be a good final send-off for him for him because i feel like he he you know he's a great actor and so he he does a great job here as he would in like you know the many sta saints of newark the sopranos movie you know i feel like he's he's you know but you know, he just he's he's always a professional, and he 
you know, he I feel like he was giving it his like the same level of like care as like you yeah. know as like any other film he he's done. You know, I I yeah did a good did a great job job you know in this cocaine in the in the film cocaine bear. Yeah, I I think you know much like we said about Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Ray Liotta's character feels up there in the more cartoonish, um, I don't want to say stereotypes, but archetypes, you know, maybe. Yeah, we could we could say archetypes. Mm. But he's he's a drug lord, he's a bad father, he refuses to change his ways when pointed out when it's pointed out to him explicitly that he is a bad guy. Mm-hmm. And he ends up, you know dying for his cause in futility Mm -hmm. so i mean you you probably could have seen all of that coming from his first appearance in the film but i i think what i wanted more of and maybe this is more on the screenplay or the direction i wanted more of the relationship between um sid and eddie Mm. because you know, we, we have the mother-daughter relationship with Carrie Russell and Dee Dee. Uh, as I say, an actor and a character name mixed up <laughs> in one sentence. Um, but we've also got this father-son dynamic that isn't played with as much as I think I would have liked. And I think that's the more interesting relationship just based on life circumstance it's a drug lord and a drug runner father and son it's not like an elementary school student and a pediatric nurse Mm. so i I think while it was not the wrong choice to explore i think sarah or sari sorry was the was carrie russell's character's name um yeah yes yeah Mm -hmm. and Dee Dee. Their relationship, it was the right choice to explore their relationship because, you know, that's Sari's heroic arc is to go rescue her daughter. But when you're not giving that amount of dedication to your lead and you're presenting really an ensemble cast, you could spend more time showing the dynamic between Sid and Eddie and Sid and David Mm -hmm. because that whole arrangement while we know what it is it's it's sort of you know middle of the second act start of the third act type introduction Mm -hmm. for the dynamic and then we don't really get to see it Mm -hmm. for more than like 20 minutes now that I think about it, the relationship between parents and chi- and their children is like a reoccurring theme, actually. Like actually, a mama bear and her cubs. Exactly. Yes, and like and like you know, oh, you guys Chris- are so smart. <laughs> God damn you! No, just Chris Christopher, the 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 uh, Scandinavian guy. He mentions like. My child would have been named Texas, you know, like that's like it just it. it you mean Olaf? Olaf, yeah. He's he's listed as Olaf. I think the, I think the actor's name is Christopher. Yeah, yeah. No, in in no, this is the thing. In the credits, I I was looking at at this. He's listed. The character is listed as Olaf parentheses Christopher. I swear to God, it's like yeah. that's how he's listed alongside the actors which his name is christopher so it's like i don't i don't quite know what that was about about you know but yeah i i i remembered his wife calling him christopher like in the films that's but but yeah but i think he's also called olaf so i'm not sure (laughs) i think he's like almost exclusively referred to as olaf like i don't remember christopher okay okay maybe i believe you i just don't remember it Mm -hmm. um but yeah that those characters set up the danger. Olaf and Elsa set up the danger mm-hmm. of the bear early in the first act. 
and you know what? Screw it. Let's just dive in. Let's mm-hmm. talk about the freaking bear. Finally. Uh, no, not finally. Oh, well, let's talk about other things. But well, since, the bear, since, I... Declan says, since Declan says finally, let's let's jump over to Max first. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the, it's a freaking bear that did cocaine, man. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so cool and like yeah it's cgi because obviously they can't train a bear on cocaine that's unrealistic so but you know it's a bear on cocaine mm. and it goes attacking yeah. people like that's cool like that's a yeah. fun movie and i don't i mean there isn't like a ton of traditional depth to the to the bear like i don't think we can talk about the bear in the way that we we've been talking about the people characters but Mm -hmm. she's a mom Mm. she's territorial bears are notoriously territorial they're gonna protect their cubs um i think something i feel like i know this about bears but like papa bears don't take care of the cubs um, Mm. because otherwise they'll eat them Mm. um or like kill them basically um Mm -hmm. don't fact check me on that i don't know if that's true it's just (laughs) what i heard i think i think it might be makes sense i mean Mm. but anyways um yeah i it it, it's kind of just like a nature story that they happen to stumble upon with the added aspect of cocaine Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which like heightens everything and then i guess kind of makes it See, I can't say relatable because 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 it's not. <laughs> not not one aspect of this not. story <laughs> with with what I know of each of our life experiences, <laughs> not one aspect of this story is relatable. No. Mm-hmm. That's, not why one. that's why I didn't say that. I stopped mm-hmm. myself. Self-control. <laughs> well done. Well done. Anyways, no, Declan, I... you you speak. You seem to have thoughts, and George <laughs> didn't want to hear them, but I want to hear them. So, no, I'll just I'll say I feel like they 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 do a good job at like using the bear to like like they they very effectively use use the bear like to like you know like appearing in the in the shadows kind of and like and you know suddenly attacking people it was also probably the right call to make the bear cgi so that like you could more properly like show its show its emotions for lack of better term what was the alternative that's my question (laughs) that is a good question i mean obviously you you get a real bear and give it cocaine and then go from there you know okay see but i i started my point by Mm -hmm. saying that that was unrealistic yeah. You ended by saying that was the only other option. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was unrealistic. So th- therefore, therefore well, they had had to do. It. It's just interesting <laughs> that you didn't say they had a trained bear and they just pretend like it's on cocaine. Yeah, yeah, that that that's okay. That's that's the actual. You don't need other, to actually. You options. don't need to actually give the bear cocaine because that would yeah. be stupid. That would not that be is smart. true. They that probably is... all would have. Died. I'm just I'm just thinking about the possibilities with a trained bear of having it knock a door off its frame and be on top of a guy on top of a door Mm. or crushing Alden Ehrenreich or sliding on its back across (laughs) next to the gazebo or (laughs) jumping jumping into an ambulance oh my god into the back of an ambulance yeah no because if I was an actor and they had a trained bear I'd be so fucking scared to like mm-hmm. see that see the bear like coming at me even though i know it's trained yeah i'd be so i would not be okay with that. i would not be okay at all remind me if i if i forget before we wrap up there is there is a question about what you would do in that situation that i want to ask mm-hmm. uh, again. Okay. um but before we get to that my thoughts on the bear yes mm-hmm. uh Every bit is advertised. Mm. I mean, Declan, mm-hmm. you say this thing's not an Oscar winner. If The Revenant can win for visual effects, hey, for oh, just I creating a CGI, that, bear, that was Max. That was Max. Yeah, I never yeah. claimed oh, claimed yeah. this one. Was, 
Apologies. Not an Oscar. Yeah, I'm Apologies. not gonna take. I'm not. I'm not gonna let Declan take the heat for that one. All right, Max. <laughs> Max, you you underestimate what the Academy will do <laughs> yeah. uh, for the sole reason that the Revenant's bear got an Oscar for visual effects. Why can't True. Cocaine Bear in the next award cycle? And we're talking about Oscar nominees next week. Why can't the Cocaine Bear? get an oscar for its cgi no i think it's gonna be a last minute substitution they're gonna take out like they're gonna take out way of water and they're gonna make Uh, they're gonna insert cocaine bear hell yeah (laughs) nominee absolutely cocaine bear unequivocally 100 (laughs) percent seriously cocaine bear is a ten thousand times more like enjoyable theatrical experience than avatar the way of water in IMAX 3D. <laughs> Cocaine Bear is I, just so much more fun. Not it's joking. Weird, it's weird that I'm agreeing with you, but as I think about it, it's like, Cocaine Bear is like, it remains like, deeply doing? thrilling and has, and like, and like, it stays at the level it needs to stay the entire film. While, while Way of Water, I kind of feel like the characters didn't feel like as good as the first film. And, and it kind of, it kind of meandered for a while Way there. Way Water was the first film. <laughs> you knew exactly where it was going because you had seen the first movie and it was going to be the exact same thing. Cocaine Bear. Just with water. You saw it in, in promo material shot by one of the actors on his phone. <laughs> After you played the EMT with the mustache, did a YouTube reel where he basically said, "You don't need to read a comic from 1978. It wasn't in the. It wasn't introduced in the post credit scene of Eternals. Mm. <laughs> it's a bear that did cocaine. If you I know did, what those words mean, I did not realize that was the actor going to this movie, knowing what to expect. <laughs> yeah. No, I." I, I think like the bear was the best part of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like, it was on cocaine ev- and it was a bear. <laughs> like was everything awesome. everything was focused on like the, the focus remained where it needed to needed to be, where it's like the the, bear the, co- on cocaine. the cocaine was just a decent enough reason for why people <laughs> would stay in a forest when there's a cocaine bear out there but also yeah. like but it's the cocaine money, bear also shows why you 80s. shouldn't do that in real life well in real life the bear would be dead so true true this this now, is this the, this the film real life bear, the real life bear in the 1980s was 150 pounds wow oh, small boy huh. this bear was like, like three five. times that size at least mm-hmm mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, like 150 so, pounds is like a person. <laughs> really? Really, cocaine bear is a parable about not giving bears cocaine in some way. You know, they really, it's like, it's it's questioning that aspect of our society. You know, that's what I would say. So are we going to see sequels either with the cubs, cocaine bears, <laughs> oh. or with other animals in that forest, like cocaine deer? Cocaine pigeon. If, cocaine if, rabbit? Cocaine if there would be is terrifying. going to be a cocaine bear sequel, I feel like cocaine bears would be the best course. But like with the two is the S. Mm, hell yeah, this guy, this guy understand. Yes, yeah. hell, hell yeah, making this movie. Someone call <laughs> Elizabeth Banks right now. We're doing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> make it happen. Start, start crowdsourcing, like they did for Velocipaster two. Mm. True. There you go. <laughs> Cannot wait for that movie. <laughs> we'll probably we'll probably do a do a, a episode on that once it comes out. Oh, we're absolutely doing an episode. We on absolutely that one. will. <laughs> you cannot stop us, Declan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I think the bottom line for a movie like this is that you don't go for highbrow cinema. No. You go for a good time. Mm-hmm. And at 95 minutes, this film does not overstay its welcome. It does not bore you. Mm -hmm. It gets your heart rate up. It gets a smile on your face. And you walk out of the theater after an hour and a half saying, all right, yeah, that was an awesome time. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like, that's, like you, that, that's all you need from a movie sometimes. You don't need you, introspective. You don't need drama. You don't need a guy cutting off his fingers. <laughs> it's just a fun ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't need to compromise anything. You don't have to be like, oh, this one, this this plot line's kind of we- kind of weak or anything like that. Like Cocaine Bear remains commi- committed at the entire time, and he provides that good time. There was one plot line that felt a little weak. Mm. Bob. Bob. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Isaiah Whitlock. Mm. Detective. I get. Mm, I get. Mm, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> he felt like a well-rounded character, and I love Isaiah Whitlock. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like he had a good relationship, like especially with David and Eddie. Mm-hmm. But well, in a movie filled with, you know, memorable characters, there's a reason why we took forty minutes almost to talk about his character, and that's because. He's really pushed off to the side. Law enforcement in a a film where law enforcement should be really involved. <laughs> yeah, they should go to the pad. We haven't talked about him at all. <laughs> they should probably figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did cocaine. <laughs> See, we keep that's, saying that, that scene at like, the uh, at the gazebo was probably my favorite in the movie Mm -hmm. with the standoff and the non-consecutive fingers getting shot off which made no sense Mm -hmm. and you know we find out that there's a double agent and we finally get to see sid in all his glory Mm -hmm. and the bear shows up and you know it's that's that was my favorite scene in the movie i don't know about you guys what was your favorite scenes that's definitely up up there, you know. What would be my favorite scene? Oh man, I don't know. I th- I think I would have to go with like just like yeah, when the bear, when like also the bear just like falling on Aaron, on all Alden Aaron, right? You know, it's like it's such a it's such a yeah yeah that, yeah. I think I think that might I I I would list that one as well as my favorite scene. <laughs> I liked all the jump scares because it was like I knew they were mm-hmm. gonna come because like you could see them coming from a mile away, but then it was just, it then they happened and you mm-hmm. I still kind of went a little yeah. bit in my seat. So like I don't know that that always feels like a good thing in a movie where like even though I know like oh yeah something bad's gonna happen, <laughs> <laughs> and then it does, but it's not like it's it's not it wasn't overdone and it wasn't like it was too drawn out or anything like that. Yeah, you get a movie like The Menu, which we talked about a few months ago. That subverts your expectations because you expect the jump scare and then it doesn't come. Mm-hmm. And in Cocaine Bear, you expect the jump scare and then the jump scare is there. And it's awesome. Mm. Yeah. And I'm a guy who doesn't particularly love jump scares. I was surprised to see that Wikipedia has this as a comedy horror because I really just thought it would be, you know, hey, this is a thriller. Or maybe mm-hmm. a comedy thriller. But, you know, horror is its own genre. I'm making my way a little bit deeper into it. Mm-hmm. But it, it it surprised me in that regard. So anyway, mm-hmm. here is my final question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. One-on-one. Oh, God. You have to fight an animal. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. To the death. We can say for this exercise, it's not on cocaine. Okay. So there will be a follow up with the animal is on cocaine. <laughs> what is, and this is a question that really, it was a very popular discussion in Make my office on, about like a month ago. Mm-hmm. What's the largest animal you think you could take in a fight and win? <sighs> not on cocaine and then on cocaine. I'm kind of wondering if, like, in the right circumstances, maybe I could defeat a horse, kind of. No, not I mean, a there is zero circumstance, cocaine or not, that you would mm-hmm. beat a horse. Yeah, if yeah. you were on cocaine and the horse was not, maybe <laughs> yeah. you'd have a chance. Like, we're, like we're, if I had we're a saying stick, that the no, animal yeah, is also I, I, I'm actively trying to kill us, right? Or something. It's you not, have no tools. Okay, okay. But, 
but George, we're active. We're assuming that that animal is actively trying to kill us, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Yeah, we are. If horse. you don't kill it, it will kill you. Honestly, okay. That, that's like actually that's actually dog. like that. That causes me to re to take away the horse. The the yeah, horse. Dude, says. you're getting kicked in the nuts and stomped in the yeah, face. Yeah. Yeah. Like if a horse was like coming head. at me, like. Oh like, yeah. I mean, sure. Mm. I'm going with a good sized dog. I I I I think. Like mm -hmm. a big, like I don't know, like a good hundred pound dog that's trying to kill me. Mm -hmm. I could, it would be a fight, mm -hmm. but I think I could do it. Mm -hmm. I like, I have pretty good confidence why that I could do it. Dog? Well, I don't want to, but if the dog's yeah. trying to kill me, mm -hmm. like... <laughs> you guys are missing uh, a super obvious one. Yeah. Sloth. Uh, what is it? Sloth. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I'll have I would to go love with to the see a sloth on cocaine. Yeah. No, because like, because then it would just go I normal, like, normal I feel thing like speed. I feel like they're kind of they're sneaky, mm. and they don't move nearly as slowly as people think. Mm. Um, I've seen Zootopia and I've been to the DMV. <laughs> All right, on cocaine, I don't know, maybe like mm -hmm. some kind of bird or something. Mm -hmm. You know, here here's another question like a for chicken. you guys. Like I could probably like I could probably take a chicken at some point. Mm. That's possible. Yeah. Also, here here's another question for you guys. Um, presuming both these animals are on cocaine, what do you think would kill you faster? A cocaine bear or a cocaine chimp? Chimp. Chimp hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. The chimp would have opposable thumbs, so it could more easily like grab you. Yeah. The chimp. Yeah. The chimp would do it faster. The bear would like. It would be more painful with more. the bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would be like the scene in the Revenant. It literally would be exactly like that, mm -hmm. just with a bear mm -hmm. on cocaine. Honestly, mm -hmm. the, the bear might have been on cocaine. We don't know. We weren't there. Okay. And I'm so excited for cocaine shark and mm -hmm. cocaine barracuda. <laughs> I want a crossover between cocaine bear and Sharknado. <laughs> that's the, I cannot the, wait for that because that's knowing Hollywood. That's gonna happen, right? What I'll say is that the Sharknado producers would one hundred percent be down for that. Velocipaster versus Cocaine <laughs> Bear would make it's three hundred billion dollars. It's a, it's a new mon. It's the, it's the new monsters universe that Universal was trying to start. That's that's their new <laughs> thing. They're not actually gonna well, do any monsters. They're just gonna do. Want... No, we don't want Godzilla <laughs> and Pong. We want Velocipaster and Cocaine Bear. Mm. Mothman? No. <laughs> cocaine Bear. We <laughs> a whole universe of cocaine addicted forest animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, oh producers, Creatures, friends. Pong. They're not animals. Cocaine owl. Sure. Cocaine. <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be amazing. That'd Give be me. Amazing. Uh, Cocaine wildebeest. I feel cocaine. like cocaine chipmunk would be like low key terrifying because mm. it would, would move super so fast. Scary. Would be like super sneaky. It blends in with the the trees and shit, so you would never see it coming, and it just jumps out at your face and eats you. Cocaine, cocaine bees. Flying squirrel. Definitely bees. No, because like you can yeah, see the squirrel because it like comes out like that, but like the chipmunk is so little tiny. Mm. Bees on cocaine would be terrifying, though. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah that, that'd that's be like, awful. That'd be, that's like that'd be horrifying. You know, just instant. No, I feel like they just are on cocaine, anyways. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that that's ninety nine. Get at me. What? Yeah. My first sentient memory in my life is being stung by a bee when I was a year and a half old, nineteen ninety nine. Oh no, that's not a great that's memory. The first time I ever remember looking in a mirror and acknowledging that it was my own existence. Huh. And it's when I had my ear like swelling up because of a bee sting. Oh, well, that would cause you to focus a little bit more. That's true. true. Yeah. That's a good point. That's fair. So Thank on that point. note, mm. uh, we had a lot of fun with Cocaine Bear, and we think you will too. It's playing in movie theaters right now. Ben's probably coming back next week. Ben's coming back next week. <laughs> uh, we are diving into the Oscar nominees, so look out for an extended episode next week where we 
break down every single category like we did last year. We're picking our favorites. We're picking our winners. And maybe we'll come up with a fun prize for uh, for whoever gets the most right in next Sunday's Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. So uh, until next week, go check out Cocaine Bear. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on social media. You guys know how I usually end these. So uh, we'll see you next week. Good night. Thanks very much. Good night.